Hello again. Alright, so uh, nothing's changed since the last time. Uh, I was just gonna go ahead and uh, more or less pick some stuff up. So uh, there was uh, just a thing put up by a, uh, by Rakes. Uh, this is actually gonna be two days behind. But long story short, uh, what am I doing here? Perry, uh, you know what? I probably do want the parry bonus on him. Do I? Actually, no. I'm gonna stick to light spears on Denim. I'm gonna pick up uh, the Volsh for now. Mm, no, I won't. He's just gonna be a rear support for the moment. He's just gonna be running up and taking opportune hits, and that's about it. God. But yeah, so there was a thing he just posted up. Not really posted, but, you know, that he uh, mentioned uh, over in the Discord there. Uh, that basically a lot of the uh, a lot of the early game like changes and side grades and stuff like that are done so it seems like about half the weapons are done more or less so we'll see how those go uh hopefully by the time that this run gets to balder things that'll be all well and out and now for the most ridiculously long cutscene ever this cutscene right here this one alone put me off of uh, doing uh, doing runs of the snes version or the ps1 version Yes, and now they're going to talk about his music box for like a million years. Yes, it'll disturb you even more later. They're worried about the danger. Da -da. Yep, everyone's scared. If you're not scared, you're probably crazy. <laughs> yep. This is true. Thanks, ye old JFK. I think that was him that said that. And this is true, because the game ends if he dies. So, he carries this clunky as crap music box with him everywhere. Uh, by the way, now we got co-commentator over here today. Uh, little one uh, wanted to play in her, uh, in her jumper here, so... Might hear some jingles and jangles and hellos. Do -do -do -do. Yep. I mean, this is a cool story and everything. He's like, yeah, you know, I just have to have to keep saving them. You know, follow uh, follow your loved ones and everything else, but. Yeah, this version is way shorter. Yes, hi over there. Hi. <laughs> Huge smiles. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, the original version I feel like was way longer. I'm I'm not sure if you couldn't skip stuff or what, but I remember just sitting there tapping the button for like 20 minutes or something. All right, how much are these? Uh, I feel like these are cheaper. Um, actually, wait a minute. I just sold one. Crap. Um, I need those. Ah, crap. I just thought I bought one. Okay. You can't get those from the store anymore. They're drops only. And I think craftables. Well, that is not great. Okay. They're like semi-rares now. Um, I think we're actually going to go ahead and uh, do Kadriga now. Or actually, no. One more time map fight just to balance out the levels. Which, I promise, will be a lot faster than last time. Alright. Get you out of here, get you out of here, get you in. Get you in. There we go. This should be a nice, offense-orientated party. Uh, maybe... Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, so this should ideally get everyone up to 5 and 6. We're going to go ahead and do this one on fast forward. Just because at this point, there really is not a whole lot of threat coming from this place, hopefully. We'll see. So first things first, Archer goes away. He's going to go up there and harass. This one's going to take the middle. Keep on firing at their Archer. There we go, got a double hit. <clears throat> uh, to kind of go further on something I was saying last time, 
Uh, when it when it comes to avoiding, well, the the whole avoidance thing, like as far as why I consider it a fun feature. Um, thing is, with with a lot of these games, if you're doing you know Iron Man runs or whatever else, and really if you're just playing in general, there's a feeling of like if you have guaranteed moves, that guaranteed moves need to be need to be rare. Um, and this is something that uh, I'd actually that they went into. It's a lot of detail about when it's um, uh, when the Ectom remake was coming out, and which that one too. Like uh, guaranteed damage moves are really precious, and the main value of this is just I believe the term was strategic uncertainty. That every time that you take an action, there has to be you know a consideration that it might fail horribly through really no one's fault other than the circumstances they're in. And that basically creates a situation where you need backup plans for basically everything. So instead of saying, you know, I'm going to move this guy here, this other guy here, like, okay, I need to move this person here. If that doesn't work out, then we do this. If that doesn't work out, we do this. And it leads to much more complicated plans, which is, you know, something that you really want in a strategy game. All right. And you continue on your counter archer duties. Uh, hopefully they can distract the healer long enough for the melee guys to take out any of those units on the right. Uh, which should then hopefully allow uh, the archers to go and take their healer. Because they won't be able to out-damage him. But they can't keep up with the damage output from all these guys. Oh, uh, one more thing is apparently early lizard classes are supposed to become more common. I'm not sure if they're going to the store or something like that. I don't know if they actually have, if that change has already gone in. But, um, but stuff like the uh, Juggernaut and the uh, Hoplite were only available starting around Chapter 3. So they should be available sooner now. That guy, hopefully the archers don't miss. And so now this right here, uh, this kind of situation is exactly why, despite despite their nerf, archers and warriors are still really, really, really strong. Um, uh, yeah, let's just do that because their their 100% hit move, uh, while not exactly being showcased here, is something that is that only comes up in a few circumstances. So despite so like if there's heavy rain or whatever else. If uh, the circumstances around the uh, the map are just plain awful, there's still you know there's still a couple classes that are able to fight under bad conditions. So that also becomes a uh, it becomes its own thing. Like base game, it was more or less something along the lines of you would just give uh, give certain units true strike, and then they were just basically going to hit no matter what. Mm, what are your hit chances? Mm. All right, we're gonna. Hopefully get the healer to heal himself. Other right. turns. Go ahead and splash or not. No. We're gonna we're gonna orb. Really don't like using this before giving him his augment, but we'll deal with that later. Do. Right, lizard go bye bye or this guy no lizard even though that might have potentially uh, tipped the scales he does have his back to the archers who should just be able to finish him off now yep definitely what I like about Sarah going slightly faster than the other archer I can use her trajectory and then just kind of Double check everything based off that. <laughs> oh, I forgot to pick up his better spear. Oh well, oh well. I'll continue to forget everything all the time. Such is life. And since I sold the lifeline gem, I no longer have the means to evacuate as many people. Only have like three evacuations. That's what we call boating well for the run. Now, more than likely, uh, this will probably end up falling apart before Chapter Four, but we'll, you know, we'll see. Oh, really? Over there? Mm. 
That thing's delicious. She has this chime thing like shoved on her face. I guess I've got a soft thing. It is so tasty. Six minutes. And there we go, got a replacement lifeline gem for the one I stupidly threw away. And got everyone their levels. Okay. So now we get an equipment upgrade. You don't. You maybe do. No, you don't. Uh, you do. No, you don't. Uh, okay, I'm starting to see a theme here. Um, right. What the hell was it that had six? Hmm. I want to go full defense on you. I think I want to go defense on this guy. Uh, makes more sense to get all your uh, Vit gear on your Berserker, so they're not taking as much damage. But this is the one I was thinking of, I think. Yeah, level 6. You are one level behind. Well, friggin' dandy. Can I say? Hmm. You know, that's fine. We'll, we'll just continue on as we are. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> There's the kids learning to talk are just the most adorable thing in the world. I, I apologize if it bugs anyone, by the way. Um, just, yeah. I had no reason to buy that. At a certain point... I mean, at, a, at a certain point when it... Um, when it comes down to it, like, there's no real, uh, real way to avoid, you know, days like, like today where, uh, like, it, it, the rest of the day there's, n there's not much I can, uh, really do as far as arranging the day better, more or less. Like, the, the kid will, well, just decide that she does not want to, uh, does not want to rest for any length of time. You know, sometimes you'll just have times where... They're like, well, I'm basically just full energy all day, 24-7. You cannot stop me. And sure enough, you cannot stop them. So, you know, as it goes. Usually fun those days, because you just, like, plop them down. Like, break out the stuffed animals. Make them dance stopper music. It's kind of hilarious. Funnier than it sounds. And there we go. You're going to get that. You're going to be our heavy spear lady. And go check out Kadrigo. Go get our uh, corpse dancer thingy. Now we are going to need to go double those guys. Um, caster won't be terribly useful. This will be good. Mm, I think. Yeah, we should be fine. They might be thinking, why didn't you bring the knight? They would have been really useful. Yes. Yes, they would have been. Yeah, she she died like a week ago, dude. Kind of amazing I haven't noticed. Oh <laughs> so yeah, he made a deal with the yellow guys. Basically, hey, let me research life and death. Just give me all the corpses. Yeah, that's... I mean, I guess it's a good deal from their perspective, because they were doing all kinds of scary crap, so they probably had a lot of those to go around. So, messed up stuff. Mm. But yeah, generally I prefer to go for the option of, you know, surrender. Like, you're going to friggin' super jail forever for all the zombie nonsense, but, uh... Yeah. And he's all happy about it. And yeah, he just he trusts him but not everybody else. Of course. And he does the usual song dance of summoning in all the zombies. We're gonna go ahead and skip that. Because all it does is just summon in all the zombies. Do -do -do -do. Alright, so, changes from base game on this fight. Uh, you may notice right away, uh, ghosts got back their teleporting ability. 
Uh, that was a weird limitation that they put in in the remake. Um, another thing is because uh, because this is the mod, uh, you actually do have to run up and get him. Um, in base game, uh, his abilities ran off of reagents, which isn't the case anymore. Uh, it is strictly an MP move. So what we're, what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna run up, probably uh, drop some buffs on uh, on the archers. I'm gonna have the archers defend themselves because their defense is crap. I'm gonna have the clerics run up and charge themselves. I'm uh, gonna have the fighters uh, strengthen, uh, use the uh, strengthen items, and then hopefully that should give enough of an edge to uh, tip this whole thing. So usually by level six, uh, you know five or six, uh, that's pretty good for taking on this one. Uh. He can't retreat, so I'm gonna go for a defense on him. Uh, mostly he's gonna be there to take some hits and back off. I'm not gonna be terribly useful in the fighting. So because there's some light rain, their archers aren't going to be fully effective, but they're, you know, they're basically taking 60% shots all day. Uh, this is definitely not XCOM, so they actually have a chance to hit. Alright. Oh, and strengthen yourself. Yeah, if this was XCOM, they would just never hit at 65%. I don't know what it is, but like anything sub-80 just has no chance to hit ever. It's kind of frustrating. Like, oh, point blank. Still 65% chance and no chance to hit. Like, misses every single time from inches away. Like, you literally have the barrel down their throat. Nope. Doesn't count. Now, Void is not necessarily here for too much damage. I'm actually going to have him strengthen Vice first. Because uh, Vice is going to probably hit harder than he does and uh, can afford to be a little bit suicidal. I do not want to lose any of my peoples already. Um, more than likely, I'm going to probably start losing people by Chapter 3. Uh, I guess one thing that bears explaining as far as the differences in life and death systems... So, okay. Base game, or base remake. I'm, I'm just, you know, base remake, because... Uh, base remake... Since you could boost anyone's base stats at any time, and because they basically got them from classes and rotating classes meant they could potentially be stronger, and all that sort of thing. I forgot to get Tremendous Shot on these guys, that would have completely guaranteed this fight. Crap. But yeah, so because you could uh, increase their base stats at any time, the main thing that you lost if anyone ever did die wasn't their skills, wasn't all the stuff they ground up, but their stats. You lost only their stats, um, you know, the next person didn't get all that stuff carried over, but they got all their skills. So the difference in this one, skills go up way faster, but if you, uh, basically you're more likely to lose units, but at the same time, those, uh, those stats aren't, um, aren't a thing. You can't raise their base stats. So the characters' base stats are just as they are. You know, that is their, that is their potential, more or less. But at the same time, all the generics and all that have been boosted, so they're just better overall. So everyone can just fight better as a baseline, but they can't get as crazy. So, for example, the uh, <laughs> the uh, crazy overpowered uh, Archer Death Squad thing that pretty much permeated the, uh, the end game of, uh, of the original, or not the original, of the remake. Yeah, that's not a thing. So... There's that. So, I'm probably going to want to down more units than exercise, but uh, for now, I'm mostly wanting to get rid of anybody that's in the way. Uh, if he starts summoning people up there, as long as I can get within archer range, we're good. I mean, for the moment, we're not really losing overall health. Um, with, uh, with three healers, we should be good. Yep. Pretty much as long as everyone stays in a little tight bundle here, we're good. You've got two jump, right? Now you're agile. Uh, agile units are much more 
much more common now. You don't see as many ridiculously sluggish ones. So his units are actually endless. As far as I'm aware, they uh, they never run out. Uh, if we came back uh, after level scaling has been triggered, there'd be a chance for them to have kill moves and things like that, but... Again, there was no real way to, to do that without throwing up other stuff, so... Everything was just kind of left as is. Um, I'm hoping, uh, once he finishes up version 1.0 and once... Um, a hardcore mode is put in, as he called it. My hope is that at that point, it'll be possible, uh, there'll be some understanding of how to trigger level scaling from the very start, and also to, uh, potentially to just leave everyone on one life. I mean, if, uh, if that version ends up becoming a reality down the line, I'll definitely be doing another, uh, another run of this just to see it in that version. Because that's basically my dream game right there. Does that sound masochistic? Yes, but I love me some shenanigans. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, I don't say. So, by the way, interesting thing right there. Uh, as you saw, his crit nearly, uh, nearly did triple damage there. Let's see what happened. This one is... Okay, that one's an archer, that's why. Yeah, it did not, it, when he was hitting, like, it, it didn't go through his armor, but it did go through hers, so he ended up doing pretty significantly more. It, that's basically how, uh, how the whole damage thing seems to work at any rate. Um, I'll, I mean, I'll admit all day, I don't fully know all the details, I can't remember all the details, I mean, I'm notoriously bad at remembering things, but yeah. The archers are just generally going to be a lot squishier, but um, it feels like the whole armor system is a lot more forgiving now. So, as I was mentioning uh, in a couple parts ago now, uh, the reason that I wasn't doing no retreats on base game was strictly because of the weird way that the armor system carries into late game, which uh, basically the mod corrects for this, uh, for this part. Well, for all of it, really. Uh, this kind of scaling carries pretty much throughout the entire thing. So there's a very good opportunity here to not have to deal with this problem. Dang it. My opportunities! Fine. They're basically doomed now. For all intents and purposes on a doom clock, that's what I mean. Yeah, I don't say. <laughs> like, looks up from a bar, flashes the biggest smile in the world. But so... Okay, so what I was trying to say is, yeah, I, I was doing no retreats, or uh, not doing no retreats on that one. And that is not a missing. That's actually what I mean. Um, because, yeah, uh, late game scaling was so friggin' weird, base game. Like... You'd have stuff that is supposed to work, but doesn't. Like, okay. Golem's main weakness, right? They're, they're golems. Magic is their weakness. That is their thing. And you would never see that. Because by the time you got there, even if you had a really good caster... Like, okay. Let's see, this super good caster does like, a hundred. The guy with the hammer over there... Um, basically he does like, three hundred. The archer does, like, 200. But their weakness is not their weakness, and... You know... Other times you'd go back with the same kind of damage type, and it's like, okay, now it just doesn't work at all? Eh, it was weird. Like, especially just around monster units. Uh, standard units, not so much. It's just the monster units that scale really bizarrely at times. So much so that, yeah, um... I think I mentioned in that part, too, that's kind of where the Fusilier run originally ended. Because uh, killing dragons became just a thing of farming orbs, and I didn't want to continue that anymore. Oh well. So we'll probably retry that. Um, because rather than... Oh, hmm. Basically, if I started it with scaling on... Actually, you know what? Get rid of this one. 
you got better health. Bye. I love knocking them off cliffs. Another thing I love that this uh, that this mod brought back. Severe damage from shields. You usually only end up doing one damage this game. Uh, you uh, you see a lot more uh, a lot more of that this time around. He's got a chance. I feel like Nibith was not um, not increased in terms of his stats, which is good because he's already got a lot going on for him. Um, but yeah, I don't think he was increased. I don't think the archer could have reached him. Probably worth checking, but didn't. And there we go. We have the fight almost won. Probably gonna go back and summon... No, he's not, interestingly enough. An idea, by the way. Uh, sh sh maybe his summon should be an active move. Or maybe make that a uh, hard mode idea down the line. Always felt like it should be an active move for him. Yeah, One Vision Ultra Masochism Edition. Everyone gets uh, gets free summons of like five units per active turn. <laughs> uh, whatever, I'd still try it. You don't have to be good at uh, at this kind of stuff to want to play them, you know. But I think that's that's the most fun part of this whole genre, though. Like, when there's no chance to win whatsoever, and then you find that, like, one little hole that you can find a way to, to get through, and then, like, trap their leader on, like, inside the mob of their own guys, and just, like, the checkmate out of nowhere. I love that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, the, the base game, that was one of those things. Like, at any point, you could just run up and snipe the leader, so it wasn't... It was a satisfying game, but you had to kind of control it yourself. <laughs> uh, I'm just picking up the cards, by the way. Um, as has been shown before, uh, this does not actually raise their stats. Uh, because of that cheat. You cheated to make it worse. Haha. <laughs> or to make it more difficult. Uh, da -da -da -da. But yeah, so... You know, it's less satisfying finding that hole when it's the size of the Grand Canyon. Like in this one, it was especially satisfying that that first um, Andorus fight. Bring an hour-long thing of just going around, not even being able to touch the guy, and finally, finally, at, like at long last, managed to surround him, take out all his dudes. Like no one could, no one could even get a hit off on him. Their healers were everywhere. He's gonna make a point to remember. Not any time, even remotely soon. I feel like, I don't know, in two years, man. Bye. You know, it would have been cool if uh, all the units aged in real time. How nuts would that be? Levels. Just archers got their... I don't think they have any new weapons. Alright, so we got Corpse Dancer. Do you have longbows yet? Yes, you do. Give them, give me two of them suckers. Uh, also, this time around, I will be selling all of these, uh, since uh, you do basically get better prices. Nice. I'm rich now. And now, a lot of the time, I like to just leave those in the background so that they sell automatically. But since you end up getting less, I'm going to do it this way. Uh, what else? Do I have any of these? Uh, give me a couple gaunts, I think. I mean, like... Um, probably four of them. I want gaunts on my archers if I can. I don't remember if they can use them. I don't think... Nah, they can't. I will. Uh, keep them in light armor. Get some bows for them. Or uh, get some... different gear for them later. Uh, that's fine. 
I know this is like a horrible OCD thing right here, and I want to switch them too, but for some reason I'm not going to. Such is life. <laughs> User thing yet? Yes, you sure can. And probably a. What? Oh, right, because you're a berserker. All right. Shield only. You get your night shield, though. I'm gonna call them light shield and night shield. That's not gonna get confusing ever. Uh, fine, that's fine. That's fine. Oh yeah, and then Tremendous. Which you already have. Right. I think I pulled a dumb at some point. Oh well, that's nothing new. It's, I have to say, it's one of those really, really, really nice things uh, that you don't have to worry about stuff like um, using all your slots for strength and, and true strike and things like that. It just feels nice. Um, so I'm going to start with Subdue. Uh, the earliest monster units I think I can get are, are going to be Octopi. Oh God, if you can... no. That's fine. And then last thing is just his spear. Any better ones? Let me go pick up that Zeiss and... Or no. Uh, it's a Volge and then a Zeiss and... I'm gonna pick up a Zeiss and anyway... His damage is going to go up, his defense is going to go down. That's a bummer. It's only for one fight, though. Um... <laughs> We're going all in for damage, might as well. Alright, gloves, legs, and spears. This guy basically looks like Ashley Riot right now. Can we pick up Perry yet? Uh, one thing it'd be nice to see, by the way, uh, is to see uh, parry and deflect show up earlier on. Because while the early weapons give you a bonus to them, they don't actually activate unless you have the skill. So it'd be nice to, uh, to see that. Because right now it really only affects um, people specking into different classes. Um, Alright, well I guess that's that then. So, uh, see you next time. I'll see you then.